And we're back. It's Tuesday, November 28th, 2023, and then we're in the off season. And there's a reason for that. The Chicago White Sox went out, not with a bang, but with a soft fart in the wild card series versus the Rays. You see game one, 11-5 victory. Zach Wheeler allows three runs in five and two-thirds, but the offense picks up the slack towards the top. And then the next two games, the offense went dead. Three runs in two games is not a winning recipe. Um, just a very poor performance here by the White Sox. Um, Gilito, excuse me, gets shelled in the last game of the series. Um, and the Rays go on to win. So Manzardo and, and company with Franco and Brandon Lau, uh, Wander wins the MVP of the series. Um, and the White Sox lose in three games in the wild card series, go home empty-handed. I mean, it was predictable. The team was not really supposed to make the playoffs, but um, it would have been nice to win a few games uh, in the postseason, but the White Sox go home. I'll show you the rest of the playoff tree, and it was an interesting result. The White Sox beat the Yankees in the World Series. Um, the Evil Empire will not receive their, I think it would have been their 28th World Series title. Instead, the Mets win their third. Um, very different from what we've seen at this trade deadline, given that they traded Verlander and Scherzer in real life and uh, Canna and a few of the other veterans. But uh, the Mets do it. Pete Alonso hits 45 bombs. Um, they push the Yankees to seven games. They actually win in seven in the NLCS and the World Series. Uh, the Yankees sweep the Rangers in the ALCS, uh, and the Orioles go out without too much of a fight. So this was a, a cool playoff field. Um, but the Mets win the World Series. White Sox lose in the first round. I'll show you some of these award winners because I talked about the MVP race and how interesting it was going to be. Um, Silver Slugger, AL Best Rookie is... Volpe, Oscar Colas finishes fourth, or third, excuse me. De La Cruz uh, unanimously wins NL Rookie of the Year. Matt McClain is not lucky enough to receive a vote from his, uh, they're, they're, still, they're all stolen by his teammate. Jacob deGrom, with his AL Triple Crown pitching season, unanimously wins the Cy Young, uh, his third Cy of his career first in the American League, and Max Fried unanimously takes the NL Cy Young away from Justin Verlander. Verlander led in ERA, but got hurt towards the end of the year, only started 27 games, so it was given to Max Fried, who started 33, led the league in war, um, and also still at a under three ERA, and Judge wins AL MVP after his Triple Crown winning year. Otani comes in sixth, surprisingly, I thought he had a good shot to uh, be in second, but Volpe comes in second for the Yankees. So it looks like another Derek Jeter <laughs> kind of player for the Yankees. Not a great defensive shortstop, but so good offensively you can't ignore him. He's well on his way to being Jeter at shortstop, negative 4.3 zone rating. Do they have DRS in this? Derek Jeter, I think he's like the worst DRS infielder of all time. Um... And in the NL, Paul Goldschmidt, back-to-back -back MVPs for Goldie. He is for sure going into the Hall of Fame now. 59.2 uh, war. He'll still be going strong, I think, into his age 40 season. De La Cruz in his rookie season gets a good number of first-place votes. Austin Riley gets one, probably from the Braves themselves. 6.1 war for Riley. Um, so a fun award season. And I'll get into some trades that I made in the arbitration period and some some uh, losses that we sustained. So if I go into October 2023, uh, into November, made a lot of moves. Um, we got rid of Mike Clevenger. Mike Moustakis retired. Um, we did pick up the option on Liam Hendricks. It's around $14 million. We picked up the option with Tim Anderson. We DFA'd a whole bunch of players. Uh, we also traded Garrett Crochet. This is our first big trade. Garrett Crochet goes to the Rockies, 
and we acquire Ryan McMahon, retaining 30% of the contract. Now, McMahon did not win the Gold Glove, but he had uh, a pretty good zone rating at second base. Not so great at third base, which is what I'd like to see from him. But for some reason, he was a full-time second baseman with the Rockies. He's going to be a full-time third baseman with us. Um, and I think he's got enough talent in the bat and enough talent with the glove to succeed. He only had an 89 WRC plus in Colorado, but I assume that with the 100 losses the Rockies sustained that his uh, morale was a bit low there. They retained 30% of the contract, so we're only on the hook for about $8 million through these four years. Um, and we're going to move Yohan Moncada to right field. McMahon, kind of a buy-low option. We got him for a reliever we were DFAing anyways. We cut Lance Lynn after declining his option. Um, we called up Lloyd L. Cipelli, called up Chris Wright, and then the guys that got claimed. Uh, well, we claimed Yenier Cano, who did not have the all-star season he had in real life this season, but he did have a pretty good year, and he's got these ratings. I think he's a good pitcher. 96-98 is an extreme ground ball guy. Um, and he's got some options left if, if things go bad. So it was a good, easy pickup for us. Um, but then we lose Jake Berger, Brandon Dixon, who made some uh, appearances for us, Adam Hazley, Gilbert Sanchez, and Sebi Zavala uh, off of waivers to these teams. But a trade we do make on that same day, November 8th, we trade Jose Rodriguez, who was... Um, Okay for us, but not good in AAA either. We trade Lennon Sosa, who did not play for us this season, but he was on the 40-man all year, for Dylan Dingler at catcher from the Detroit Tigers. Dingler has 65 catcher ability, 70 catcher arm. He's a righty, um, so I wanted to bring somebody into platoon with him. I'll get to that in a minute. But he had 1.9 war in Detroit this season. His rookie year um, was a positive framer in a half season of work. <laughs> We're losing Yasmani Grandal in free agency. I don't plan on re-signing him. He wants $15 million for three years. So I wanted some cost-effective options. And with Dingler on the minimum, trading two right-handed infielders that can't really play second base all that well, I was not upset to make that trade. The left-handed part of the platoon that we did acquire was Garrett Stubbs, who didn't have a good year with Philadelphia, but is a lefty. He'll play in the platoon. He's only making close to $2 million, and he's in arbitration. I'm happy to have him. He's a leader. Um, Dingler, I also believe, is a leader, if I remember. No, he's normal, but he's got that catcher ability that I like. Um, so we made that trade, giving up Jordan Sprinkle, who could very well make the major leagues, but um, that bat is not good enough with his defensive ratings. He's a good second baseman. The Phillies have met shortstop. This is the second trade we've already made with the Phillies, the other one being the Wheeler trade. Dalquist we send uh, to Philadelphia, and it looks like they've immediately rerouted him to Minnesota along with Sir Anthony Dominguez for Simeon Woods Richardson. So the Phillies making some moves. We uh, re-signed a lot of the guys we had in arbitration. Seth Brown is back. Dylan Cease is back. Seawald and Leiter Jr. are back. Uh, we made a minor trade with Matt Foster, who we were planning on DFAing anyways. We sent him to the Yankees. He had a bad season with us, along with Branlin Jaraba, who we had signed um, prior to the season. Kept him in low A all season long for the most part. Rookie ball, low A, high A, we played him. He's only going to be a first baseman. Um, and we got Roderick Arias, who is a highly regarded prospect in real life. But in this game, he's not so great anymore. This is more of a lottery ticket. He's got a really good arm at third base. And if this bat comes along as a switch hitter, he's only 19. Um, and he can also play in the outfield well. It's kind of a dart throw. But I don't think Haraba is going to be anything. And Matt Foster was going to leave anyways. So it was uh, a, a trade that is possible to be good for us in the future. Uh, Jose Ruiz was another guy. He had a good year for us, um, 1.2 R war, 1.0 war, but he wanted $2 million in arbitration. I don't think that he's that good of a pitcher. He was out of options, 29 years old. He's been with the White Sox um, for a few years. That was his best season on the south side, but um, again, no options. Wanted to get rid of him. We also traded Eric Adler, who is a decent bullpen arm, but this control... 
um, is, I think, prohibitive of him being anything more than minor league depth. And we got Jimmy Crooks, who's a left-handed 22-year-old catcher. The Cardinals offered this to me, and I think um, fortifying your system with good catchers is important. Teams value them more than other players, and Crooks being a lefty, even though this catcher ability is low, is a good thing to have. Um, all these guys stuck around in December. Oh, it's still November. So those are the transactions we, we had made um, before the free agent period. Um, right now we need a shortstop. I'm going to plan on playing Tim Anderson at second and Moncada at, uh, in right field. McMahon will play third. Um, Sheets is still here with Vaughn. They'll platoon at first base. Dingler and Stubbs will platoon at catcher. And right now I would hope to bring in, I think I need um, a right-handed third base option and a left-handed second base option. Now, Jordan Westbrook, Westberg, I keep calling him Westbrook, is down in AAA. He can't really play third base all that well, but I might bring him up anyways to be the right-handed utility option. And then I would search for a left-handed utility option, whether that is Maui Ahuna, who I bring up. Um, I'd like to see him in the minors for one more year. Varus could come up too. He's almost fully developed, um, but he's only 21. Terrell Tatum might come up to the 40-man to be an uh, outfielder. But we have a lot of outfield options right now. Cespedes, Robert, Seth Brown is back, Colas, and Jimenez. Um, I might trade Eloy. This contract is not great for who he is, um, but I love his power. It's just that we kind of have a jam in the outfield. I, I like Yolki Cespedes a lot as a platoon option. Um, I did get offered. I don't know if it's still here. No, not this. I got offered this trade from the Rangers, which has expired, um, and they've already traded Dustin Harris to the Red Sox. But I got offered Dustin Harris for Eloy Jimenez. Um, I already have sheets, and I Harris didn't have a great year for the Rangers, so I think... Thought about getting off the contract. Hernandez is not really a prospect. Um, but I wanted to keep Eloy because he's a White Sox in real life. I don't I don't want to lose all the players that the White Sox have um, in real life. Chappelle is also an outfielder, but more of a... Uh, he can play all over the diamond. Um, so I might end up trading Eloy. I'll put him back on the trade block. We'll see. And then on the pitching side... Brandon Williamson will be up, I think, with us. He has no options left. Um, Trevor Williams is sticking around. Wheeler, Giolito. I'll switch to this screen, actually. Wheeler, Giolito, and Cease are the three big starters. I'd like to bring in two more, I think. I don't really want Trevor Williams and Brandon Williamson starting. Hendricks is back. He'll be the closer. Andrew Abbott is also there. Um, he can start a bit, too. Giovanni Moran, Leiter Jr. Chris Wright, I called up. He'll probably start the season in AAA, but he's a good profile as a lefty. Um, with options. Brought back Seawald at um, $4.2 million. And we brought back Tanner Banks as a lefty with options, 32 years old. Just nice to keep him around. He can also be a spot starter if needed. He made two starts last season. Yenier Cano is also here, as is Aaron Bummer. But with the amount of lefties in the pen, I might end up trading Bummer. Um, I'm going to put him on the block. He still is a good left-handed pitcher. But he's very um, heavily platoon split to the left-handed side. He's got good movement against righties, but he's not a great reliever against righties. And if we look at his splits, um, he was much better against lefties. Not even an average pitcher against righties last year. But that's the bullpen right now. 14 players, some options. So um, we'll see if we bring anybody in. I actually have offers up to two starters right now. And like I said, these are the... Uh, Players on the lineup side of things, 13 players. I think I'm going to put Westbrook, Westberg, gosh, Westberg in the rotation um, right now, or in the lineup right now. And then I'm also going to throw up uh, Seamus and Cannon on the 40 man. They've earned it. Remove them from my prospect short lists. And Davis Martin is coming back from injury. He is eligible for the Rule 5 draft, but he's not blowing me away. I don't want to put him on the roster right now. I still need a third catcher. It might end up just being Sebastian Rivero. He's got options. He's played the majors before, albeit poorly, in Kansas City for a short period of time. Um, if I make a trade for another catcher, or if I bring up Hackenberg, 
because he is a little bit better than Rivero. We'll see about that. Um, right now, the minor league system is still not looking great. Our rookie class, the potentials are high, but they're certain to come down um, as they move through the minors. So as much as I'd love to contend right now, the system is not good and not as deep as I want it to be. Ahuna is there, but he's only one guy. Varus, I'm not really certain he'll hit, and, and same with Tatum. So we're still in a mindset of, of bettering the farm system. We're up to 19th. We were at 15 for a minute, but I think it went back down. Still the same top 100 prospects. Um, and I'll show you the major league players that I'm looking at right now to sign. Alex Cobb had a good year for San Francisco, was traded to Cleveland, and didn't end up having um, any success there. He only wants $2 million to be a starter, and he's a veteran that's been proven. Um, the past three years have been good for him, so I would love to have him on the team. Burt Cole comes over from the KBO. He spent a few years in the uh, Cubs system, made his major league debut in 2014. So he would come back 10 years later if he debuted with us. Um, spent five seasons in the KBO. Uh, was most recently in the major league affiliated minors with uh, Oakland and with a few other teams in Jacksonville, Amarillo, um, Las Vegas, and Reno. He pitched okay in the KBO this season, pitched really well last season, so I'd love to bring him in. He's a lefty, humble personality class. 65 stamina as a starter is good. I think he got hurt. Um, yep, he tore his labrum in the KBO. He only wants $3 million for three years. He is uh, 34, so we'd be bringing in two older starters, but they're very cheap as compared to the rest of the starting pitching market. I'd love to bring in Otani, but I don't have enough money to sign him. Um, Urias is too much for him. Montas is good, but he's unmotivated and didn't have a good year. So Cobb and Cole are the two um, budget signings that I'd love to have. Sonny Gray is a backup plan. Uh, this guy, Yukihito Ikebe, is a um, Japanese-generated free agent. Really good stuff on him. But Cole and Cobb will be the guys I'd like to bring in the most. And then Nick Ahmed. Only wanted two years, $7 million. He just won the gold glove at, or no, he didn't win the gold glove at shortstop. He had the best zone rating of any player at shortstop this season. 1.2 war, 56 WRC+. plus. I'd like to see the bat be better, um, but with his kind of glove, I'm okay with that level of offensive production, and we don't really have a backup shortstop. I don't want to put Tim Anderson there again. I'd rather have him at second base, and we'd have a really good up-the-middle defense. We were fifth in zone rating last year, but the middle infield defense was bad. Tim Anderson was, I think, a negative defender. No, he's positive at shortstop, but not as good as I'd like him to be. He'd be better at second because we, uh, we had a negative defender at second base. But this team defensively should come along next year, and um, that should help improve things. If Colas plays left field, I think he's got a better shot to be a positive defender with Moncada in right, um, Robert in center. We could have a plus defender at every position with McMahon and Dingler um, and then Ahmed if he comes in and plays shortstop. So that would, I think, benefit us in the win-loss column. Now, I don't know if we're going to win 90 games again, given that we did only um, expect to win 83 games in the Pythagorean record. So I'm making marginal improvements, and I'm not spending all that much money. We don't have all that much money at our disposal anyways um, with the trade I made for McMahon, um, re-signing Giolito, picking up the option on Hendricks and Anderson, keeping Jimenez. We really don't have a lot of money. Um, but the team, I think, is set up well for the future. I will see if I can trade Bummer or Eloy. That would just depend on getting the right offer. I'm happy with having Seth, Seth Brown um, take some DH at bats along with Sheets. Um, and I want to see Yoaki Cespedes play more, given that he had a better season than Eloy, albeit in much less playing time. Uh, and then we have a lot of righty bats in the minors that I think could see playing time if we get rid of Eloy and somebody gets hurt. So that's what we're looking at right now. Um, I will, I think, wrap up the offseason at the end of this video, and then the next video will be on to um, the 2024 regular season. So... Catch you in December.